What's up, everyone? So recently I was talking about using um, like the hue and saturation layer and the vibrance layer and uh, things like that, these adjustment layers in color blend mode um, to target just color or what we call chroma information. And I just wanted to kind of round that out, even though this has been talked about many times. I have even talked about it before, but just to kind of round out that thought by using adjustment layers to target luminosity information or luma, right? So it's chroma luma. And on top of that, on this video, after I show you the, the obvious ways to do it, which are super useful, um, we're also going to talk about doing a more intentional chroma luma split. Um, yeah, it's a little bit technical, but sometimes it's very useful. And it also creates a little bit more separation, if you will, from the chroma and luma, depending on what you're trying to do. So let's just get right into it. So let's say on this shot that we want to add contrast. Okay, so many different ways that we could go about it, but let's go ahead and add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. Pretty, pretty straightforward, right? So if I go to the contrast slider and I increase it, let's just go a little bit more for a little bit more than maybe I would do for you know, demo purposes. So there you go. So we have off and on, we have added contrast. Now, if you've ever done this before, but never changed the blend mode, you might think, well, okay, I got my contrast, but like the color is a little strong. And that's true. And that's because the contrast boosting that the slider does that the adjustment layers calculations are doing is targeting all the information, color and luminosity or chroma and luma. Fastest way to change that is take the blend mode to luminosity on the very bottom. Watch the change now. If I go to luminosity, it's very, very subtle. I know on the video, but let me go back to normal luminosity, normal luminosity. So if we put it on luminosity. We're now targeting only the luminosity, only the luma. And because of that, we don't have this unexpected color boost because we're ignoring that information. So right there, built in into Photoshop, an adjustment layer can be changed in a blend mode, just like we put it on color for uh, for our hue and saturation adjustments. We can put what I call, um, you know, my c c contrast and texture um, adjustment layers, you know, anything brightness and contrast, uh, levels and curves. Yeah. Curves can be used for coloring, uh, levels can be used for coloring, but often that's just going to be my, my contrast boosting, my contrast reduction, things of that nature, brightening and darkening. As a rule, I always put those kind of things. Let me just delete this. I'm going to put a curves out now. I always put these kind of layers for brightening and darkening on luminosity blending mode. Now, it doesn't always make everything better. Sometimes you might go to luminosity blend mode to darken or lighten and notice that you don't like the result and normal was better. There's a lot of reasons why. It just depends on the base image, right? So let's say I go to curves and I do a typical curves brightening, something like that, right? So there it is, normal mode. Let's put it on luminosity. Very, very subtle, but our shadows are not quite as saturated. Here on normal, inside here in the shadows, right? There's a lot of color in there. Granted, this is a final image and it's been color graded. So we're bringing out some of that. But if we go to luminosity versus normal luminosity, there it is. We notice that our shadows are a lot more. Oops, go back to luminosity. Our shadows are more under control. Again, this is not a great look for the shot. It's too bright. But the, what I'm trying to illustrate is how when we target the right data that we're trying to modify, generally we get better results. So it's a good idea to at least try it. Um, yeah, I always do that. Uh, for example, when I use um, curves to set up dodge and burn layers, okay, for dodge and burn for skin correction, I, I put it on luminosity blend mode. If you've watched my videos before, you've probably heard me say that. And that's just to minimize, again, color shifting of, of, of any kind. Now, that is a, it's just a good way of life. By the way, you know, again, even though levels and curves have RGB channel modification capabilities, things like brightness, contrast, levels, curves, and exposure are really, really good to put in luminosity blend mode, once again, to minimize color shifting. And experimenting with the different um, adjustment layers and the different blend modes can lead to a lot of really cool and interesting functions. Um, but just keep in mind that there are some, how do I put this? There are some functions that are, are very useful uh, so, for example, you know, um, you know uh, brightness and contrast in luminosity blend mode. There's some other ones that are just fun and creative. I, I certainly don't have any, I, you know, I don't have anything memorized about which adjustment layers to use in different blend modes to get different things. It all can get pretty complicated, kind of gets a little bit esoteric. I get that. So don't try to pretend or worry that, oh, I don't know all of this stuff. I mean, nobody does. I certainly don't. Right. But I do know <clears throat> that when I make a bright brightening or a darkening effect of some kind of some kind in Photoshop, excuse me, I tend to put it on luminosity blending mode for that reason. And like I said, in the previous video, we use hue and saturation for color grading, uh, excuse me, for boosting saturation. But like I was going to say, you can put selective color, just one example, you can put selective color 
in color blend mode and target just the color information. Now that doesn't usually make too much of a difference to be perfectly honest. I'm gonna change the yellows around as well. Let's just see what I'm doing here. Okay, something, I'm trying to get, uh, green's probably not gonna have a whole lot. Let's see. Let's go back to yellows and make it a little crazier. Really strong yellow. Okay, so we put that from color to normal. And, oh, let's see our color. Color, normal, color, normal. See, when we're adding color grading to those color ranges, red and yellow, on normal, we get some extra contrast we don't expect. On color, we get just the color and we leave the luminosity information alone, right? So it, it's not like, a, like I said, it's not like, oh, you should put it in this mode at all times. No, 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 no. I mean, Adobe would have put it in these modes by default if it was um, obviously superior. No. However, sometimes when you, you know, when you change that blend mode, you can get more predictable, uh, more um, a smooth, <laughs> whatever word you want to play with it or you want to use. The more you play around with it, you'll start seeing that. So for color adjustment layers, try color blend mode. And for brightening and darkening, try Luma. Now I've repeated myself. Now let's do a basic chroma Luma split and we can see how that works. Okay. So if, if you, if you don't want to get into the little bit of color science and just stop the video now, but if you want to see a little bit about it, because you'll, you might notice that it works a little bit better in terms of the uh, splitting. Let me show you one of the most basic ways to do it. So let's go get, go ahead and get our information. So, uh, that is our Luma and chroma. First, we're going to get our Luma. One of the fastest way is a solid color adjustment layer. We can put it on any gray that is not perfectly white or perfectly black. I tend to put it on 50. There you go. Put that blend mode on color. Now that is perfect Luma information, luminosity, but we need that as pixels. So what do we do? We do shift option command or shift alt control E and we flatten that if you will into a new layer. Okay. Now we can keep this color fill layer at 50% because now we can switch it to luminosity blend mode. And that chaos that you're looking at there is chroma information. It's chroma based on gray, which has uh, a lot of use. It's perfectly good for doing color adjustments. We can do chroma based on white, which is a little more technical. But for now, we're going to work with the gray because it's so simple. We just have 50% gray. We choose color and luminosity. Okay. Now we have the, the uh, chroma data. So once again, shift alt control E or shift option command E. And there they are. All right. So now to really, really drive this point home, let's put the chroma on top of the luma and we'll take that chroma and put it in color blend mode the image has been rebuilt. Okay. So now the chroma is by itself. I mean, that's the Luma by itself and there's the chroma by itself. So now if I had to put, for example, on top of the Luma layer, if I put uh, brightness and contrast, I don't have to change the blend mode because everything underneath it is just Luma. So when I increase the contrast, I'm increasing only the luminosity contrast or decreasing it. See that? Only that. Now you can see the radical difference if I take this brightness and contrast layer and put it on top of everything. You see how it gets stronger, put it below, it doesn't. And if you try this and experiment back and forth between blend modes and an actual chroma luma split, you'll start seeing that there's a little bit of difference. So if you really, really need to add a lot of, um, a lot of luminosity adjusting, but you're really concerned about your colors, a full split might be better for you. It also might not. You definitely want to explain, you know, uh, experiment. Also, you know, a bunch of extra layers and all this stuff. Sure, you can set up actions and, and we have actions for this. Don't get me wrong. But most of the time, your blend mode in your in your adjustment layers is going to get you where you want to be. But this method exists um, just because it exists, right? So now if we go to um, the uh, chroma information, a little bit different because of the way we have the layers stacked. What I recommend doing is if you have a hue and saturation, hold down alt or option and clip it down. And now you're only affecting the saturation of the chroma. Okay. And that's going to give you very, very, you know, a little bit more subtle, um, uh, excuse me, saturation boosting. If you use saturation, uh, without messing with that color data, which just keeps things a little bit smoother. It's also like I mentioned earlier, let's say we put a selected color, we clip it down and now we can do our grading without worrying about messing with our luminosity information. Again, um, I know people who have, uh, you know, uh, use this method or discovered the method and then they set up an action near the end of their workflow that separates it like this. And then they do their grading and contrast boosting and everything manually <clears throat> uh, separated like this. And then they flatten when they're done. Is it the most practical? Well, not really. I mean, it's, it's more practical than some things we show, um, but it's still very, very useful for accomplishing things that, again, maybe your blend modes and your adjustment layers are, are not quite there. You probably won't notice 
the difference between using um, adjustment layers and blend modes versus an actual chroma luma split, you probably won't notice too much of a difference, especially if you're newer at Photoshop or newer to making uh, color grades and modifications. You know, if it's not something that that you do a whole, whole lot, the difference won't be a difference, really. I'm just being honest with you. Um, I don't often separate Chroma from Luma uh, for, for editing purposes. Uh, we do it for lots of different things and utility purposes for our panels and for some of the actions, but I'm just showing you what's possible so you can kind of understand how when we're approaching an edit, for example, with luminosity first and then chroma later, it's a common thing that I like to uh, showcase and teach because you can accomplish so much more. And one of the ways I like to kind of explain it, if you will, one of the ways I like to explain it is uh, a lot of us that do a lot of uh, Photoshop editing uh, are used to the term frequency separation, right? And we run frequency separation to separate texture from, I guess, non-texture, right? Some people call it texture versus color. That's sort of true. But really, it's just the the more obvious um, refined high frequency texture versus the lower texture, the broader texture. Really, it's a texture separation. Chroma Luma is what it sounds like. It's a separation of color and luminosity, right? And so those splits can be very, very useful. We have actions, um, actions 12, NBP actions 12, actually, that can set up a whole layer stack that splits up chroma luma and uh, texture, uh, frequency separation, all of that um, at once. So you can attack it from, from multiple directions. I, I might do that. In fact, I'll just, I'll just show you real quick. I'm sure it's here somewhere. <clears throat> I don't use it a whole, whole lot, but let's go ahead and run it. This is right here. Uh, frequency separation, dodge and burn, chroma luma median. All right, let's run that one. Yes, that's fine. It doesn't matter the radius. Um, I can change it if I needed to, but it's just a demo. There we go. So now we have this whole layer stack, which I've shown before. But here again, we have frequency separation on the bottom, all through here. We have dodge and burn on top, and then the chroma is separated by itself. The chroma is separated in this layer stack simply to protect it. You can modify it, but really it's just to keep it away from everything else that you're doing. Most often when I start with this layer stack, I'll turn off the chroma <clears throat> and I'll do all my cleanup work in monochrome, in Luma, get everything clean because that's usually where my texture problems are. Once I get the texture issues resolved that I want or, or shaping however I want it to be, I turn on my chroma and I can modify that. So again, we're just kind of like a splitting up an image or decomposing an image in different ways to try to modify it more specifically of what we're trying to accomplish. Now, I would say arguably nine out of every 10 edits that you just add an adjustment layer and brighten and darken a little bit you're gonna be just fine. But when you wanna make significant changes, when you wanna be a little more refined, when you don't want a little bit of color bleeding or color artifacting to come out, change those blend modes and you'll be surprised at how refined everything can look, right? So if we already have the mindset of frequency separation, think about chroma luma separation. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so many different ways that we can decompose an image. But for now, just keep in mind, try those blend modes. You really will be surprised, I guarantee it.